Hey, welcome back! Getting back to the stocks you recommended recently. A reminder, if you want me to cover something, let me know why in the comments. If many of us like something, I can then do a deeper analysis like the usual, so your feedback is much appreciated. Again, we can see some interesting companies, but let's get into it. Now, Hims and Hers, they sell personal care products and drugs and I see that people are very optimistic about this company. They indeed have very impressive margins and a very nice growth in subscribers, offering a pretty interesting business model. The EBITDA margin is also improving and they target it in the 20-30% area in the long term. In time, they expanded into dermatology, mental health and even weight loss, recently announcing a competitor to Ozempic and WeGavi at an 85% discount. However, keep in mind that this is not completely FDA approved. It's a bit of a special case because the drugs are on the FDA's shortage list, which can change. Financially, they are in a very good position, with the current assets more than double the total liabilities, so very, very good. Even when taking the goodwill out, they look very good from this point of view, but it's a much smaller company than the market cap. An issue I see with them having such a high margin is Amazon and the rest of the potential competition. If you have an 80% margin with white label drugs, what's stopping Amazon, who already has a telehealth business and you can't compete with Prime, to expand and also offer this kind of product for a 20% margin? If a new company can do this and get 80%, Amazon can probably get even more and also a much better volume. Still, another point of view would be the potential of Amazon or CVS or another company buying Hims. You know, even 10-20 billion wouldn't be much for them. Another potential issue is the huge stock-based compensation. They are getting to 20 million per quarter, so up to 6-7% of the revenue. That's a lot for a young company that's barely making money now. It's good motivation, but 60 to 80 million per year for a company that was worth a billion not even a year ago is a huge amount of money. We see a bit of insider selling lately, but it's not really a lot of money to be a concern. However, the stock they get today is probably restricted, so this is something to keep an eye on in the following 1, 2, 3 years or more. Now, can they keep growing? Yes. This is a very small company and when they get so much attention and combine it with issuing shares, they gain access to a lot of capital without having to pay it back. That way, they can develop in so many areas and deliver this kind of growth. They don't have high maintenance costs because they don't actually produce what they sell, so a majority of the money can go into marketing which can then deliver growth. I've seen this kind of company before, it's nothing new, but this one seems to actually do very well so far. I think this kind of company is a step forward into the future of healthcare, but the margin may be too high right now, so we shouldn't set this kind of expectations. Still, there is potential because it's a very small company in a huge market, but ultimately it's a bet. I mentioned a lot of hype around it at the beginning and this is how it would potentially deliver very good results. But if the company or the CEO does something or the growth slows down and people start to lose confidence, they can easily crash. Is it a value investment? No, but for a speculative high risk, high reward investment, they can be okay, especially if bought at a lower price. You know, I like the company overall, although the stock may be too expensive. But if they keep growing so much, then even from this level, they can probably be a 2, 3, 4x depending on the market. That uh, weight loss drug actually offers potential to really change the market and can produce many billions for the company. I can see this as a small speculative position, but since I don't like the price, I'll just wait for now. If it falls, then great, if not also great for people who bought. Now, McDonald's, I'm sure you all know about them, this is one of the biggest companies on the planet with a market cap of about 200 billion. The stock didn't do so well lately and overall the past half a decade wasn't really the best. They can make around 6-7 billion, putting them at a ratio of around 25, which is around the average of the past decade. They have a very good operating margin, but they aren't delivering that much growth. Because of that, they have a plan to invest in opening new restaurants as well as digital delivery and drive-thru. From a close to 42,000 a year ago, they plan to have 50,000 restaurants by 2027, but that generates capex. They expect about 2.5 billion this year, plus 3 to 500 million per year until 2027. So, they are obviously entering into a new investment cycle, which the market often doesn't like until after it's over and it sees the benefits. If they do that, then they can probably get to 9-10 billion in cash flows, which would be a bit better for a 180 billion market cap. 
Despite the company's market cap, this is actually a pretty small business and they aren't in such good shape. The current assets don't cover the current liabilities and overall the total assets are below the total liabilities. That means that they have negative equity and that's with 3 billion in goodwill. Do you think the brand's potential and all the other stuff that's not on the balance sheet are worth 200 billion? I get that it's a very powerful brand and I agree, but financially this is very far from that. They need about 4.85 billion for the dividend, which is a lot for a company making around 7 billion. About 1.2 billion goes on the interest and lately about 3 to 4 billion on the buybacks, plus the debt making it unsustainable, but thankfully they can just refinance. If they couldn't refinance, then this would have been really bad. Still, this had an effect on the debt and we can see it almost quadrupling in a decade. Eventually, this will have to be addressed and something, probably the buybacks, will be cut. I think this isn't a matter of if, but rather when. For me, this is way too small of a dividend and overall the reward doesn't seem that attractive. As mainly a dividend stock, 2.6% is terrible. And the issue is that that's quite a bit of money for McDonald's. If it was a 30% payout then sure, but it's more like 70, meaning that they have very little room for debt, interest and investments. They can issue shares and take care of that, but that has an effect on the return you get. So in the current market I really don't see a reason to go for such a company. But again, that's for me, you can have totally different goals and risk reward tolerance. If you're happy with 5, 6, 7% returns, then this can be okay. Still, you have to be careful with the financials and the company's lack of flexibility. Who knows what CEO down the road says the debt is too much and we have to do something. When they do that and cut the buybacks or something, the market won't like it. You know, maybe if they manage to increase the number of restaurants by 20% as they plan, they could make like 10 billion and then focus on repaying the debt and things might be okay. But it's an uncertainty and even then, this isn't such an attractive potential. Now, Rheinmetall, this is one of the top defense companies on the planet. With so many conflicts on the planet lately, this type of company is more and more interesting for the market. Now, I don't really see them as defense companies. I get special vehicles or air defense and stuff, but tanks, ammo, grenades, these are pretty flexible. I don't want to go too much into detail, but I don't invest in this type of company for ethical reasons. But having a look at the stock, we see them going nowhere from 2007 to 2020 and then you know what happened, it doubled, then it happened again and they doubled again. So the stock went up like 5 times since 2020 or even 10 if you bought during the bottom, but the company barely made money. Even the revenue is up only 30% since 2020. How much more do they need to happen to actually make good money? And sure, they have a lot of backlog, but uh, they probably didn't even have the production capacity to keep up with this kind of demand, which is probably a reason why the capex doubled. And even if they fulfill all that backlog today, that's like 4 billion in operating cash flows. Currently, they are traded at a price to free cash flow ratio of even 100, so the market has extremely good expectations. That is many times above the company's average and they'd have to make so much just to be at a fair value. I think this is a good example of market hysteria and fear of missing out. If they make like 5, 6, 7 times more money then this would be a fair value, but do they even have the capacity and the demand? Financially they are ok, with the current assets above the current liabilities and almost higher than the total ones, but this is a very tiny company. They have like 2.5 billion in equity after the goodwill, which is very little for a 23 billion market cap for such a company. And uh, you know, buying this at uh, hopefully the peak of conflict on the planet doesn't seem like such a good idea. If you are lucky and bought in 2020, then congrats, but now? It feels like buying a commodity stock at the absolute peak of the commodity. Sure, it can go up even more, but what if it doesn't and they go back to a fair value of like 100 euros and stay there for decades again? They have a lot of political influence, but you don't really get much from that, as we can see with the stock's performance from before the wars. You know, buying now is like an all-in bet on another war coming. If it does, obviously it depends on where it is, you I'd say at most double your money and if it doesn't, then you probably lose a majority of it. And finally, Vulcan Energy Resources. What's interesting about them is that they plan to make zero carbon lithium and renewable energy in Germany. So they would potentially have a very low cost green lithium production in Europe, which you can imagine is very interesting for many companies. 
If you remember from my previous videos, Stellantis has invested in them about a year ago and we can see companies like VW, Renault, Yumicor and LG joining as well. They also have the largest reserve in Europe, lasting them for about 30 years. The first step of production began in April this year, so we don't have much data about how much they can produce. This is a project developer right now, so it's riskier, but it comes with much more potential than a miner. Looking at the stock, we can see them up like 3 times since February, but a year ago they were at the same level as today, so you can see the volatility. During the peak, they were like 4 times more expensive than today. Financially, they are in a very good position, with the current assets covering the total liabilities like 3 times. But another up to half a billion euros will be needed soon from the European Investment Bank, so this financial health can be affected. Still, they would use the money to get assets, so it would probably still be good, not to mention that this would help them produce as well. Now, lithium, as any other commodity, depends on the supply and demand balance. The supply gap is expected to be really significant by the end of the decade, as the demand would go up thanks especially to EVs. However, with a slowdown in EVs and maybe even a recession in the meantime, what if the target is met in 2035 instead of 2030? That's 5 whole years in which the supply can grow thanks to new mines and discoveries, plus the potential for a replacement. Half a decade is a huge amount of time when so much money is spent on researching alternatives that use either less or even no lithium at all. This is why low cost production is important, because if anyone would survive, it would be this kind of company. Ideally, they would also have good financials, because if there are bad times, going into debt might be the only way of financing and developing the projects. So, this is like any other project developer, a bet. If everything goes well, they can easily be a 3, 5, 10, 20x, depending on when you buy. I mean, they were a 3x if you bought in February this year already, and nothing significant happened, so you can see the potential. But if there are issues, keep in mind that this company doesn't make money. The only way they can currently make money is by either issuing shares, which they did significantly, or by issuing debt. And the thing is, in a recession, for example, Stellantis, VW and the rest probably wouldn't have the capital to spare for this kind of project, so financing may suddenly become very expensive. But I like what they potentially offer, and at the right price and with enough patience, this can be very good. If they manage to finish everything, this can be a pretty good strategic position thanks to the production being in Europe, low cost and carbon neutral, even if it's not a lot. So, once again, some interesting companies. Even though I'm not interested in the defense industry, I think it offers a lot to learn from and they show how much market hysteria can do. Make sure to check out the other videos in the series as well and since you have lots of suggestions and like the previous ones, more are coming for sure. If you have a suggestion, briefly let me know what's interesting about them and I might add them to the list. And once again, if you like one of the companies we talked about today, let me know in the comments and I'll try to cover the ones that are interesting for most of us. And finally, these are just some quick reviews that took me like 5 hours each, so I'm definitely missing stuff. My approach is very careful and patient, so I'm never going to say I just found this and I'm definitely buying. Still, following the series, I actually added quite a few stocks to my watchlist and I see that as a gain. As always, what I cover in my videos shouldn't be enough for you to make any investment decision, so please do your own research before investing in anything. If you want to see more videos like this one, please leave a like and even a comment to help me out and make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.